Kamagala Hana, Kamagala Kasuda, Angwan, Tingu Nanganwe, Unangana Sakta Kuyak, Amakacha Sakta Ilarian Merkuyev. In our people's way, uh, we look at each other as our other self. And I said, I am Unangin, which uh, in Western ways is called Aleut. And uh, I come from the people of the sea line, the stellar sea line. And my people have been out in the Bering Sea for over 10,000 years and we're still there. I've had a lot of experience with what people call climate change, indigenous people call climate crisis. For example, I chaired the North American uh, Gathering of Indigenous Peoples on the healing of Mother Earth. I chaired the Indigenous Knowledge Sessions for the Global Summit of Indigenous Peoples on Climate Change. And I also was the scientific chair for Snow Change, which is uh, a consortium of eight Arctic countries, Indigenous people from eight Arctic countries. And, of course, I've spoken a lot on climate crisis here in Alaska. Uh, everything is changing quite dramatically. Migratory routes of birds are changing. A um, number of species are declining very rapidly. In my hometown of St. Paul Island in the middle of the Bering Sea, we had uh, about 1.2 million fur seals and two and a half million seabirds, a uh, thousand reindeer and 500 Unungan people on an island that's 12 miles long and five miles wide. When I left there, there were 1.2 million fur seals and now there are about 400,000. It's gone down quite dramatically. Stellar sea lines, which are central to our culture, have declined 80% in the last 30 years. We were in the top five of the top uh, bird colonies in North America, and now we're up about 25 or so. And the elders that I work with here in Alaska, um, I mean, they have seen dramatic changes to everything. It was the sea ice is coming down um, uh, later and leaving earlier and it's getting thinner. We have five species of salmon in Alaska and all these species are having trouble. And my people on St. Paul Island, we fish for halibut for food and uh, as a center of our economy and the halibut are disappearing. Crab have virtually disappeared into nothing. Uh, the environmental officer from uh, South Central Alaska from um, Puget Sound said that they got no ducks this year because the migratory flyway has changed so dramatically. We have now five communities in Alaska that have to move because of storm driven waves and permafrost is uh, getting thinner uh, which means that uh, the infrastructure that is like pipelines etc are uh, cracking and breaking and all that kind of thing. Runways are being, uh, are having trouble. There is no aspect of this climate crisis that we don't uh, experience and it's getting worse. The elders here are talking about having two winters in a year. That may seem uh, against the logic when things are warming up. But um, in two regions of Alaska, the elders see two winters coming. Now I just um, asked for a meeting with world elders uh, in November of last year to go to Kauai to answer two questions. One, what is the state of the world as they see it now? And two, what do they feel we should do about it? And part of what the elders have said is that we, in the human race is focused on a myriad of issues that we have created on our own, uh, be it 
um, refugees, uh, wars, uh, social injustices, political corruption, um, damage to Mother Earth, or maybe thousands of more environmental organizations uh, today in the world compared to 30 years ago, but yet Mother Earth's life support systems are going to the edge. They say that this will continue unless we change our consciousness. This consciousness is mind-centered and they know that we need to change uh, as a human species or we're done for. So they ask the question, what are you choosing to focus on? Are you choosing to focus on the um, you know, reaction to something? Or are you choosing to focus on that which you want to see? And uh, because they know that when we react to a problem, no matter what it is, socially, politically, economically, uh, environmentally, that, that investing your spiritual and uh, physical and emotional energies in that thing will add to the problems and that nothing uh, new is going to be created, even the most modern of technologies uh, or the most pioneering thinking is still using the same consciousness. And Einstein said, and I'm paraphrasing, that you can't solve the problems with the same consciousness that's creating the problems. And, and we see this consciousness addressing climate crisis now. And for example, um, using hybrid cars, supposedly a good deal, right? Well, they said, well, what happens when we have these hybrid batteries? Uh, it's filled with exotic minerals that have to be mined. And what happens when we um, finish the usefulness of the vehicle? Uh, do we trash it? Uh, do we recycle it uh, like we do our computers, recycling the parts to poor countries and the poor people in those countries like Thailand are taking apart these pieces to collect the precious mineral so that they can survive and while they're doing that they're poisoning themselves and the earth. I was asked once by Al Gore's team um, to be part of the team and I said sure I'll be glad to do that if we can bring the indigenous voice and they said no you've got to use Al Gore's PowerPoint. And we give him credit for raising awareness about climate change, but there's a subscript to The Inconvenient Truth, for example, the film that was made. And that subscript is, let's utilize modern technologies. And what it fails to do is bring the message that we have to simplify. Um, you know, even the size of our average homes uh, anywhere in the United States, here is what, 2,000 feet? Um, we have to simplify. We can use these interim measures that are being applied today like wind power and solar power, but only as an interim measure. We cannot, the elders believe, use it as a final solution because it's created by the same consciousness that created these problems. And what they do is exacerbate the issues, and, and including uh, climate crisis, that in, in the interim it could slow it down, um, but it's only an interim measure. We cannot gauge our success by the amount of wind power we have in the world or solar power, etc. Because even to do the solar power, you have to use the state-of-the-art technologies, which costs a lot of money, that, is, that you have to dig into Mother Earth to do.
do that. And we give a great deal of weight to quote unquote sustainability. Native peoples around the world understand that uh, these are terms that have now been co-opted by industry, yeah, but are used by environmental groups that is a concept, it is not a way of life, that we have to switch to uh, a way of life where sustainability isn't even a word because we live it every day. You know, the Yupik elders here call this the reverse society or the inside-out society because we reversed all the laws for living. And one of those reversals, the most significant one, in their opinion, is the shift from the heart to the mind, where the mind is now telling the heart what to do. The way that we do it, which is the heart telling the mind what to do, and the mind figures out how to do it. That is a function of the mind. But now we rely on it for knowledge. And our societies value knowledge. But the elders understand that knowledge without wisdom is not only useless, but can be very dangerous. And in this case, we believe that it is. Stop thinking we're not going to think ourselves out of this. Rational actions is not going to work. That the only thing that's going to work is to, to drop into our hearts. And they understand that our hearts tell us what we need to do. Each of us has a different calling. But whatever that calling is, when we're in our hearts, we are doing that which we must do. And this is what they're saying, that we've got to go there or we're done for. To do that will require courage. So I hope that you will take this message to heart and, and cogitate on it and then we will have some hope for the future. Thank you.